Hello everyone, this is Evan Abrams for Premium Beat, and in this motion design tutorial, we're going to use After Effects to draw and animate this line art style email icon. So we've got an envelope, and then like a paper comes out of it, and then it goes away. We're going to do all this inside of After Effects. It doesn't take very long, and we get to work entirely in this program to make something that is very hip and with it, and hopefully you can follow along and we can do that. If you get lost though, the project file is available at Premium Beat for free download you'll enjoy it so if you want to go get that and then follow along staring at your own or if you want to just make it then we're gonna jump into After Effects and make this thing happen so the first thing you need to do is open up After Effects and make a new composition so I'm working with a 640 by 640 square pixels 29.97 frame rate five seconds in duration it's not going to be very long because this is really just an example now in this example we're going to need a new solid this is going to be the background it's going to hide some of the errors or at least some of the little tweaks that we do that we don't want people to see so white solid wonderful make it the composition size okay and i'm going to be using a lot of numbers this is kind of a recipe we're going to go through and your numbers might need to be different if you're working with something that is larger or smaller so just keep that in mind that i'm showing you how to make one specific thing but hopefully you can extrapolate this to make all sorts of other things. So we've got our background. Step two, we're done. Step three, let's make that circle thing. How about we do that? So uh, we can go up here to uh, a little shape layer menu. Go to the ellipse tool. For the circle, we don't need a fill. We can make that go away. Uh, I would like a stroke. It can be, uh, you know, no saturation, but you know, a little bit, maybe, you know, 10% on the gray, good. And 10 pixel stroke, good. I'm gonna double click on this thing. It's going to make a circle that is the height and width of this particular comp, but I'm going to change that to 450. That's the size I would like. And now I'm going to animate it on using the trim paths to do a little right on technique. So I'm going to do that by setting a keyframe at the beginning and have the end and the offset keyframes for each of those. Offset's going to start at 30. I'm going to move ahead to one second here, change the offset to 90, have this thing come all the way on. So it's going to start like this and it's come around and then it's done. Go to the stroke and instead of butt caps, let's do round caps and round joints. So everything's nice and round and it's coming on. Now I'm going to take these keyframes, hit F9 to ease those, go into the graph editor. And what I'd like to do is just pull their handles kind of like this and then uh, pull these handles a little bit like this. Just so they're decelerating as they come on. And I think that looks good. All right, that circle is done. Let's name our layers so we know what's what. Circle on, perfect. And we'll probably never have to touch this. So we'll just lock that layer and we're good to go. The next thing I wanna do is animate on the envelope. So I'm gonna go up to the shape tool up here. Let's get the rectangle tool. Now I would like a fill in there. So let's fill that in and let's make it the same color as the background, perfect. And now we're going to just, you know, double click on here. It'll make a rectangle and then go into the rectangle and change the size here. 300 by 175 that looks about right now I'm going to go into the stroke here and we're gonna have round caps and round joints and this is going to be the envelope back it's gonna be the back of the envelope and I want this to come on using the trim paths again so we're gonna add a trim paths and the trim paths I want to start at 50% and 50% so the start and end are both right in the middle set a couple keyframes for this move ahead to around 14 frames and then these values will be zero and a hundred so they are coming on from one corner to another and I'm just going to ease hitting F9 easing those first two keyframes so they're kind of coming on a little slow awesome and this is going to be the envelope back I've already labeled it perfect now I need the flap the flap of the envelope so what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the envelope back and this envelope back, I'm gonna just rename it to flap top so that I know this is the flap when it's on top of the envelope. And going in here into its contents, into the rectangle, convert to Bezier path and the trim paths, I'm gonna edit that as well. So the path here, since converting it is now this series of points, I'm gonna take one of those points and delete it 
and now I'm going to call up the grid. I'm going to make sure I'm snapping to the grid. And I'm just going to take this and I'll just stick it just like that. I think that looks perfectly good. And now what I'd like to do is have it right on as well. So I don't need to keyframe the start of it. I'll just have the end of it go from zero all the way up to 100%. And how will I make this happen? Well, let's go to about frame 13. That's where I'd like it to start. And I can start like this. And then we're going to move ahead to maybe around here. It's going to be at 50%, so it's just about done. And then it's all the way done. We're done with it right there. So it's going to go, this comes on, and then it writes on the rest of the way. I'm going to ease this keyframe here. So it comes on and kind of slows down at the finish. And we've got the envelope flap coming on. There is a little bit of weirdness that's going on right here because we've got... Uh, a fill on here. So we don't really want that to happen because see that looks bad. We don't, we don't want that little aberration coming in right there. So this fill we don't want to happen until this point right here when it's totally fine because the whole thing is completed. So we can go into the fill and we can go to the opacity of the fill and we can go right here, set it to 0%. And then right there, everything's completed, everything's good. It's a seamless transition as it comes on. So perfect. Now I'd like to parent the flap top to the envelope back because I don't want it to live right here. I'd like it to just move down a little bit, hang out around there. I think this is a good spot for this thing to hang out. Um, now we'll go back into that flap top and so make sure that path is snapped to the grid in a pleasing spot because what I'm going to do next is animate this flap. So starting at one second, I want that flap to go from this position to just grabbing this point, moving it up like so. So it's going to go from here to there. Wonderful. Now I'm going to grab those and zoom in so I can look at those, pull its handle so that it goes in a much more pleasing way. Woo! Opens up like that. And at this point, the flap is going to transition from being on top of things to being behind them. So what I'm going to want to do is duplicate this and sort of cut it at this point where I'm no longer interested in what it's doing or have another layer sort of take over what's going on. But there are yet more layers to make. So this is animated on. Wonderful. Now what I need is to have that fold back here, something that will cover up a letter that I'm going to put in there. So the next thing to do is duplicate this envelope back and we're going to call this envelope front. And it's going to start its life right here. And the envelope front, open it up, and the contents, get that rectangle, convert that to a path. This thing actually doesn't need a trim paths because the lines that make it up have already been animated on. And its path, I would like to now take uh, this, add a point, and move that point right there, lining up very nicely on, you know, things. So everything's lining up good. So this comes on, perfect. And now when the flap goes up, we're leaving behind this fun little thing here. Great. So let's see how that looks. Whoop, flap is opening up. Now we need to put a letter in our envelope. Let's do that. And I like to do that by, well, let's duplicate the envelope back and we're gonna call this letter. It's gonna be the letter. And in that letter, inside the contents, inside the rectangle, rectangle path, Let's say that it's going to be 200 by 200. Maybe that'll work. So that's good. It also nicely lines up on this grid, which I think is very attractive. And the letter, as you can see, is behind. It's behind the envelope front, but it needs to be on top of this flap at the point where it kind of crosses over, which is going to be right here. So I'm going to control shift duplicate, which is going to split this thing and then move this layer here, back, back, back. So what's going to happen is this starts on top and goes up like this. And the letter, the letter, I'm going to want to start down inside. And then when this comes up, then it'll come up on top. So 
the letter should start its life around here. So I'm holding Alt, hitting the square bracket. So we're moving it up like this. See how we're doing. This opens up. Good, it's, it's working out so far. And then what I'll want is for this to kind of wee come up out of here. But the letter is gonna do more than just that. It's gonna come up and it's gonna floop over. Let's go back to the original example and we'll see the letter comes out and then it floops over in this fun, fun flooping right here. It's got this kind of three-dimensional thing that it's doing. It's all very nice. And that's the kind of thing that we want to make happen. So in order to do that, I need to edit this letter quite a bit. So I'm going to go into the letter. I'm going to go into this rectangle path. And I'm going to duplicate it first. And then I'm going to convert one of those to a series of points. All right. Now these points, this path, I'm going to grab them. I'm going to make it a little bit longer. Let's make this thing a little longer like that maybe, or it doesn't have to be too much longer. But what we're going to do is I'm going to add some points. So I'm going to just go like this, just clicking on there, adding these points that look kind of like that which is not exactly what I'm into. Then I'm gonna to go to the Convert Vertex here, and I'm gonna just stretch these points out like this to make these nice curves. So let's do that over here, stretchy stretch, just like that. So now this has these nice curves on it, which is pretty great. And the next thing I wanna do is take this rectangle path and just make it wider like so. All right, with me so far? And then I'm going to add a Merge Paths and with that merge paths, I'm going to then add an intersect. So intersect is saying only show up where these two things intersect each other. All right, that makes perfect sense to me. Should hopefully makes perfect sense to everybody else. So I can get rid of this trim paths. That's not really part of the letter. What we're going to do is we're going to have this rectangle here. I'm going to change its position to go up. So its position is going to change, you know, maybe starting at, maybe starting at one second. Uh, let me just solo this so we can only see what's going on here. I'm going to change its position starting at one second and maybe going, you know, a little ways to two seconds. And it's going to go wee up like this. Boom. And that's how it's going to go. So it's going to start here and it's going to go up like that, which... I'll be honest, is not very interesting. I'm going to take these things, I'm going to easy ease them, and I'm just going to alter them here. It should be 75 on this one, and let's say 65 on that one to create this interesting sort of humpy shape. It goes warp like that. Okay, that's pretty good, but it needs to come down the other side. So let me just take this letter, set it to yellow so I can keep these things separate. Now I'm going to duplicate it. And then let's go into that thing, into its contents, into the rectangle here. Find that path. Here we go. Grab this path. We're going to transform. And we're going to flip it horizontally. All right. So now this whole layer has been flipped horizontally, which is wonderful. And then we just need to move it over, or at least just move the path over. That would probably be the easier way to do it. Just move the path over so it lines up like this. And then, I mean, that's that's not even close to what we want to have happen. We need to go into here, hit U, grab these things, and we're going to go keyframe assistant, time reverse, so they start at the top. And then we're going to just check these things. This is going to be 75 on this one. Go 65 on that one. All right, good. And when this one reaches the top, which is here, that's when we want this one to start. So let's play that back. Boop. So this layer only needs to start right here because this one's going to come up and like that. Whee! And then it comes right down like that. Pretty good. This one here can not show up from this point on because it's no longer necessary. So then we get this kind of thing going on, comes up, whoosh, and comes down like that. And there is one more thing that uh, I want to do, is that I don't really want a square piece of paper. That's not really what I'm into. So what I might have to do is just go in here to this rectangle path, 
make this uh, a little bit taller, maybe taller like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Maybe this should be 250. See how that looks. And then you just might need to adjust this this one up so that it's like this. And there we go. So now it's wee coming up and it's a whole piece of paper. Wonderful. So now let's unsolo these and we'll see what's going on. Hmm, very strange, very strange indeed. So this layer needs to be in front of envelope front and it's right there. Okay, great. So that's happening. This is coming up and whoosh like that. Cool, cool. So something else that needs to happen is for this whole thing to move, we need to change its position. So I'm gonna grab this, change the position, or you should parent this part of the paper to this part of the paper, because then I'm going to uh, move it so that it's moving up, 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 up. Mm, have not moved it up enough. Up, up, up. Like this, wee. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You can stand to move down a bit. So this thing's wee, like that. And you should always ease such things because that will put people at ease. Wee, so now it's boing, coming out of the envelope. You want to then go in here and change this curve a little bit. So as this thing is opening, we want to alter this curve so that it's not poking out over the, uh, over the top of the envelope, that would not be cool. So you might have to actually adjust this a little bit just to make sure, and you might need to have it, you know, not start so soon, or you might need to alter its position so it starts a little bit lower. But either way, what you're gonna do is you're gonna make sure that it doesn't poke up out of the top of the envelope unexpectedly. Wee. Now this thing kind of just jumps out. Boing, boing, wee. So you might need to tweak this a little bit just to get it in the right spot for you, just so it's not flying all, that, all out of the place like nobody's business. You might need to extend this, but that's I think that's very pleasant. <laughs> but however you mess around with your timing to make that happen, doesn't really matter. You've got paper jumping out of an envelope and I think that's pretty nice. So let's review, envelope comes on and then it jumps out. Now, as you just noticed probably, here is a part where we see too much of that envelope. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna duplicate that white solid and I'm gonna move it above this here and to change the letter to have a track mat you know, we could do uh, alpha inverted of this thing, and then we could just go, uh, we just go like this. And I think that should work out perfectly fine. So floop, we boing, flooping out just like that. Perfect. So now you've got a letter jumping out of the envelope. There are some other little things that we want to put on. Line style is nothing without detail. So what we should do is we should put fun bursty thing, like a brr, like a big sunburst that happens. Let's do that around this time, I think. And to do that, I'm going to use just plain old rectangles. So just double click on the rectangle. I'm going to call this layer burst. And in that rectangle, in that rectangle path, we don't need a fill. Let's delete that. And what I'm going to do is have a layer that starts out whenever the size of this thing, zero comma zero. We're gonna put keyframes on the size and position and then we're gonna go ahead one, two, three, four, five, and then we're gonna go maybe 155, set this to minus 170. That looks like a good spot. Then we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five ahead a little bit more, and then let's go to minus 375. So even further, keep it going. Let's have a look at that graph. Ooh, that's kind of fun. In the graph though, I think what I'll do is I will edit the speed of these things to start out very, very fast. Because I like, I like bursts to start fast. Boom. So it kind of wee bursts on through. And then I'm gonna go into these groups. I'm gonna take that stroke and I'm move it outside the group and then I'm gonna take the stroke and I'm gonna add some dashes to them. And there's gonna be a dash, a gap, and then another dash. And I'm gonna go like 20, 30, and then 60. That should do it. So we get this kind of dashed pattern. All right, so far so good. Then I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this rectangle group. So notice this is the rectangle group 
and in it, I'm going to add a repeater. And in that group with the repeater, I want six copies and I want to transform the repeater to have zero position change, but the rotation is going to be 360 divided by six, which makes the star. And if you already know math, you know that those are all separated by 60 degrees. So you get this kind of wee whoosh happening. I know the layer needs to terminate right here before things get too crazy. And you get this nice little starburst. Pretty nice. Now, something else to do is to take this rectangle group, duplicate it, go into the rectangle group, go into the transform of it, scale it down like 60% and then rotate it rotate it 30 degrees, neat. And then you get this a little bit more complex starburst happening just by duplicating that group. So you end up with two groups and this stroke. And again, like we've been doing, we get the round cap on here, the round join, everything's nice and round. You might even start this so you don't have that dot. And then you've got this little starburst. So you just wanna time that up with when things are kind of completing. So maybe Bing. There you go, hides a little bit of the stuff. The last little detail I think you want to put on here is to put some words on your page so it seems like there's stuff on one side of the page. This is kind of a complicated maneuver that you're going to do, but uh, it, it pays off. It pays off to do it like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into this letter two and we're going to duplicate this thing here that's called rectangle one to make rectangle two. And I'm going to call this line one. It's going to be one line of the text. So in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this rectangle path here, the one that's that's moving, I'm going to change its size, change its size down to be like this. And then I'm just going to shrink this down to be like 150, maybe. I'm going to grab both of these position keyframes, move them over like this, kind of like this. Now we can zoom in here, we can really see where this is going right there perfect now let's play this back let's see what this looks like yeah it looks like a line is on the page it's not perfect but it is pretty close to where we want it to be okay so we've got line one and that's working out but let's duplicate that to make line two then we go into this rectangle path here grab the position of that and we are going to bump it up a bit. So maybe it's on around here like that. So you can see, oh yeah, those are coming in. Let's duplicate that again to make line three. Again, we're going in here, we're changing the position and then we're just changing it up to here on here, like minus 80. Awesome. Duplicate again, going into that rectangle, finding that position path, taking it down here to 40. Duplicate again, this is gonna be the last one. I promise you, we go in here, we grab those positions and then we move this all the way down to 80. Awesome, and then we've got this very simple thing that looks like a letter. So now let's play that back, boing, there we go. It all comes together just like that. And you've pretty much completed the whole thing. There's one final thing to do though, you want it all to go away. If you're gonna do this in a GIF, you're gonna to wanna to loop this thing, right? So we did that circle at the beginning. Let's duplicate that circle. And now we're gonna do circle off. So I'm gonna put this above everything. And this layer really only has to begin around here. And what it's gonna do is on circle off, go into the contents, go into the ellipse, we're not gonna use the trim path, so we don't need that. But we're gonna take that ellipse, we're gonna to go to its size, and then we're gonna have it, just go ahead 10 frames, have it get big enough to envelop everything, so maybe it gets as big as 500, and then we're gonna move ahead you know, another 10 frames, and then it's gonna shrink down to zero. So let's see that again, it's gonna get bigger, and then shrink down to zero. All right, that's pretty good, but it needs to encompass everything. So now I'm going to add to this, a rectangle, and that rectangle path, I need to be larger than the frame. This thing's gonna need a fill now, and it's gonna need a merge paths. And that merge paths, we're gonna go with subtract, and just make sure these are in the correct order so that it's this path subtract, this path equals what we've got. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna get big, and then it's gonna get small again. So boop, boom. So this red, if we make this red the color of the background, 
boom, just like that. And if we have the circle on, stop hanging around right here, then it's like this gets bigger and then eats everything. So it's like this, it's gonna get bigger. So really what we need is for this thing to stick around and we need its size to actually be linked to this size. So let's do that. We can do that by holding Alt, clicking on this, and then pick whipping up wee to this line here. So what does that mean? It means it's gonna get bigger. And oh, I think it actually needs to get bigger than that, just so it's very clear that it's eating everything. Let's ease that, let's ease this. You know what, let's ease them all. Ease all three of those, boom. Goes up, gets big, should get big a little bit faster. And then goes like this. So we just pull the handles like that, whoop, boom. So let's see that again, like this, so it's up. This is when the top one takes over, so up, boom, just like that. Whee, shoomp. And now you are done. So if you've enjoyed doing this thing, and I hope you have, I would recommend you subscribe to this channel. Uh, I've been Evan Abrams for Premium Beat. If you had trouble with this thing, I would recommend you download the project file over at the blog post on Premium Beat. I think you will enjoy that. And check out everything that Premium Beat has to offer. They have wonderful music and sound effects that would really go well with all of your motion graphics pieces, like these line art envelope things. Maybe some weep, or music, that's good too. But head over to Premium Beat, get this project file if this is something you want to dive into or if it's something that gave you troubles. And subscribe to uh, these social medias because that's how you learn more stuff when it comes out. I've been Evan Abrams. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you around the internet.